One cannot help but be in awe when he contemplates the mysteries of eternity, life, and the marvelous structure of reality. Albert Einstein On that day, every man, woman, and child on Earth instantly turned to stone. How would you define science? Well, it's not a thing or an invention, but rather a concept, an action that we humans developed through thousands of years. In its purest form, science is nothing else but the pursuit of better understanding the world around us and then using that knowledge to create tools. Tools that have a great potential for good, but also, of course, evil. The latter of which we humans constantly obsess about on a daily basis. There's not a day that goes by where the news isn't filled with constant talk about problems and sufferings that need to be solved. And as long as panic and fear sell as well as they do, none of this will ever change. But it's not all bad. We humans, we are problem solvers, so knowing what issues are out there to be solved is in and of itself a benefit to the pursuit of science. But if we only focus on the bad that was caused, this can leave people hopeless and depressed. And without hope, there can be no science. Because science is built upon a fundamental law for humanity and a fundamental hope for betterment. And therefore, science and pessimism do not work well together. Because to believe that you are capable of solving a problem no one else has ever faced before requires a lot of hope and faith in your human potential. A concept that is beautifully presented within Senku, the main protagonist of Dr. Stone. An anime that displays the value of humanity beautifully well. An anime that can reignite your love for humanity and, in turn, your love for science. It's October 5th in the year 5738. You really slept in for a hell of a long time. How do you know what day it is? You got some kind of calendar or what? Huh? I figured it out by counting. It was the logical thing to do. Oh. Taking place in the year 5738, we follow a young teenage genius named Senku Ishigami. It's been 3700 years since all of humanity was hit by a greenish light that encompassed the entire globe and petrified every single human. Back in the present, Senku is suddenly brought out of petrification and then greeted by a world that is unrecognizable to him. All traces of human civilization have vanished and in its place, nature took over. Senku doesn't waste any time though and starts gathering things to build up a camp. A place from which he then starts to research the petrification of humanity. Once he gets a basic understanding of what broke him free, he then manages to find a way to help others do the same. At first, he only manages to break one of his best friends free. But then together, with the help of Taisho's strength and endurance, they are able to produce a substance that is strong and erosive enough to instantaneously break someone out of petrification. But it's not magic or fantasy either. Throughout the entire show, Senku always explains in acute detail how he intends to solve the problem scientifically. He always clarifies what materials he'll be using and in what manner they will be combined. They carry on until one day they're forced to revive a complete stranger since they're being attacked by a lion. That stranger is called Tsukasa, one of the strongest teenagers of the past world. Grateful for his revival, he saves them and then vows to protect them from now on. The Kingdom of Science has just acquired a valuable new asset. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Sanko soon realizes that he didn't just revive someone with incredible strength, but also someone with a clear goal in mind. Tsukasa is driven by a core value that he carries. His ideology regards adults as inherently corrupt and therefore they must be cleansed from this world. Only then can he convince the ones that are pure of heart that humanity needs to go back to its roots, back to its natural state. And so, Tsukasa starts killing every single petrified adult that he encounters, never even questioning whether they were good people or not, completely blinded by the faith in his own ideology. Needless to say, Sanku disagrees. He believes that every human deserves to be revived. He knows that he is in no position to play God and to decide who's worthy and who isn't. To him, humanity as a whole is worthy of living, because it's humanity as a whole that pursues science. They part your ways and pursue their own individual goals, but not without Tsukasa first promising to kill Sanku once he gets the chance. He doesn't believe in science or in any progress for that matter. And so, he firmly believes that he needs to kill Senku to stop the advance of science. To him, 
There is nothing more unnatural than science itself. You would never lie. Not when it comes to science. So will you promise me, here and now and for all eternity, that you'll abandon science? Tsukasa may have a point when he asserts that we've distanced ourselves from nature in the traditional sense of the word. But he is utterly wrong in believing that our natural state is not much different from the natural state of animals. You see, humanity is different from any other living being on this planet for many reasons, but the main reason clearly manifests itself in the field of science. And that is the act of questioning things, the act of not simply accepting things for what they are, but also trying to better understand why they are. A feat that inevitably and obviously led humanity to doubt. But without doubt, we would have never invented anything whatsoever. All of our problems and all of our ailments would have beaten us down and left us hopeless in the past and humans would have never gotten as far as we did. We would still be stuck in the stone age if it wasn't for the doubt that we have in nature. If it wasn't for science. But we also have to be wary not to put all our faith in science either. Nowadays, humans love to do exactly that. But the truth is that wherever we put our faith into, that faith can be manipulated by others because faith is the complete trust and belief in someone or something else. And that clearly goes against what science stands for. There can never be faith in science because science itself doesn't allow that. If you aren't capable of doubt, you can't practice science. And so, if you aren't capable of questioning past scientific findings, you will never discover new ones. So never let anyone tell you that if you don't completely agree with a mainstream belief, you don't believe in science, or that something has to be a certain way because a certain amount of scientists said so. Scientists aren't always right. In fact, most of them are wrong most of the time. But that's exactly what makes them scientists. People who are ready to be wrong and make mistakes. People who then adjust their findings and never let themselves be influenced by the faith in a certain idea that they carried. And that is exactly what science is all about. It's a long and arduous process that won't always be successful, but it's one that is inherently human. Humanity would not be the same without doubt. Actually, we wouldn't be humans at all in my opinion, which is exactly why Tsukasa's ideal doesn't work. Our natural state is to question things, and so our natural state is to practice science. Regardless of how much progress you strip away from humanity, we will never stop doubting and questioning things, and therefore we will inevitably start the process of science once again. A fact that is perfectly represented by Chrome, one of the show's main characters that practices science without even knowing what it is. Thousands of years away from any past scientific discovery, he defies all odds and becomes a scientist. Because science is a fundamental part of being human. No matter how far back you turn the clock, within humanity, the act of science will always prevail. the power of science. Mankind defeated the darkness. And now we're gonna do it again. For the first time in 3700 years, the flame of science will burn. Nowadays, we are constantly fed bad news about this world of ours. We are always reminded of the horrible things humanity did and is still doing. There isn't a second that passes without us hammering ourselves with guilt and shame. It's all over the news, in our social media feeds, and now, even in the entertainment that we watch to get away from it all. It's a practice that makes a lot of money for people that take advantage of our human fears and anxieties. But it's also a practice that can break the spirits of many. A practice that robs most people of hope. And eventually, it's followed by pessimism, depression, and in the end, revolt or death. So needless to say, it's refreshing and welcoming to have an anime like Dr. Stone to watch. An anime that is aware of all the horrible things that happened in the past, but also an anime that won't let itself be defined by that. We humans, we should never forget our own history, but rather, look at it and use it as a learning experience. That is one of the beauties of humanity after all. It may have taken humans thousands of years to invent the wheel, books and many other miracles, but through science, we were able to accumulate that knowledge. It was then passed down from generation to generation, and eventually ended up in the present, empowering us, the descendants, with an incredible amount of knowledge. 
The fact that I am even capable of making this video right now on my own is proof of this incredible human achievement. A video like this would be literally impossible only a hundred years ago. But through decades of people coming together and sharing the knowledge they've gathered, we were able to make it mainstream enough for anyone to indulge in. And that is the true potential of science and also the true philosophy of Dr. Stone. Science is gathering the entirety of past human knowledge and then using it to create new achievements. Achievements that will benefit everyone in the end. Because science doesn't discriminate. All of humanity is capable of practicing it and so it inevitably becomes a tide that lifts all ships. We've had to suppress many struggles in the past, from the Black Death to polio. And every time, humanity was able to beat them down through innovation, through the aggregation of all past human doubt put into one field. Science. And so, whenever there was a problem, we were able to solve it. Because unlike any other being, we humans are capable of exponentially more than our ancestors. What to them was a life or death situation, became nothing more than petty inconveniences for us. And so, no matter what the problem may be, we humans will find a solution to it. You may not like the solution, you may even despise it, but you won't change anything by just prohibiting us from doing science. Humanity will always practice it no matter the circumstances. And so, the best thing one can do is to find an even better solution themselves, to practice science themselves. And in the end, if politics and faith are left out of it, the best solution will be applied. So don't be influenced by the constant influx of bad news because we've had worse problems to face in the past and we overcame those as well. So be optimistic and not out of a simple faith either, but rather because you know that science is what we humans use to understand this physical world of ours. And so, if enough work and enough minds are put into it, there is no problem science can face. Therefore, there is no problem too big for humanity. Not even petrification itself. If you practice science, you can be optimistic about the future and contribute to all of human alliance. Thanks for watching guys, feel free to subscribe and check out one of my previous videos right here. This channel is all about looking at video games and pop culture from a different perspective. About digging deeper into the meaning of life and how we can get there with video games, movies and TV shows. So if that interests you, maybe subscribe? Maybe hit the bell to be notified? What about that, huh? Yeah! Okay, good. <laughs> See ya! No matter what it takes, I'll save you! <laughs> I won't let you die.